All right, these are the additional problems to practice that is your projectile review. And the first one's our football, and it's thrown at a speed of 18.9 meters per second at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal. So what it's telling us is it's throwing like this, 18.9 meters per second and a 25 degree angle. The first thing they want us to do is to find the horizontal velocity. Well, that's going to be our Vx right here. So for part A, I'm going to act like this is a triangle, okay? And if that's the case, I just want to know what my Vx is of this triangle. So that's using like vectors and trig. So um, that's adjacent. This is my adjacent side, and this is my hypotenuse side. So I'm going to use cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to plug in what I know. Cosine of 25 degrees equals my Vx over 18.9 meters per second. Algebraically, I need to cross multiply, and that comes out to be 17.13 meters per second. That's my first answer. My second question is that it wants me to find my initial vertical velocity. Well, really what it wants me to find is my Vy, because that's going to be the speed at the beginning going up and right at the end when it finishes. So, for B, this is the opposite side. So since it's opposite, I'm going to use sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of 25 degrees equals my Vy over my 18.9 meters per second. Again, I'm going to cross multiply to solve for my Vy, which will give me an answer of 7.99 meters per second. All right. So that's all the first two questions wanted me to find. Now C actually wants me to find this distance as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make an XY table because this will probably come in handy to do these different pieces now. So VX equals 17.13 meters per second. And the number one rule of projectiles is that never ever changes. And then my VY is going to be 7.99 meters per second. Now, I'm always going to talk about the down trip if I get to choose. So I'm going to say gravity is 10 meters per second squared. And that's going to mean that this VY that I found earlier is going to be my final because my initial on the downwards trip is going to be 0 meters per second. Um, it wants me to find DY. So that's what I'm going to start with. To find dy, there's a formula on your formula chart that actually says vf squared equals vo squared plus 2gd. If that's the case, I'm going to say 7.99 squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times 10 times d. I can cancel out the 0, divide by 20, isolate my variable, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. When you put that in your calculator, uh, you should get an answer of 3.19 meters. So that's my dy. All right, so this was part C, and my answer was 3.9 meters, 3.19. So I'm going to write that in my data table as well. All right. Now part um, D wants me to find my hang time. Hang time is the time it took to go up and the time it took to go down. Again, I like to talk about the down trip. So I'm just going to use this information over here in the Y, and I'm only going to talk about the down trip. So I can say T equals the square root of 2D over G. If that's the case, then I can now say the square root of 2 times 3.19 divided by 10 equals and I get an answer of 0 0.80 seconds. If that's the case, I'm going to have to multiply it by 2 to get my hang time because that's just the 1 T. So then it would be 1.6 seconds. All right. Finally, now we're going to look for the range that the football went, which means they want this whole pink distance right here, which is going to be my DX. All right. 
So when I solve for this, I need to remember that the only formula I can use on the x side is v equals d over t. If that's the case, then this is vx and this is dx. Well, I figured vx out in a, so it was 17.13 meters per second. I'm then going to say that equals my dx, which is what I want to find over my time. I'm going to use my hang time from the above because that is both my up-down time. It's my total time. So 1.6 seconds. Again, I'm going to cross-multiply. And when I cross-multiply those two together, I am going to get 27.41 meters. All right. This problem should have looked real familiar because it was your warm-up problem um, the first day we did projectiles. Okay? But you need to be able to do problems like this that have five parts because you're going to see one on your test. Moving on. Number two. A can is kicked horizontally off the edge of a 5.6 meter high cliff. And here's my can up here. It's going to get kicked off. Okay, um, we're told that it's been given a horizontal speed of 6.2 meters per second. So we first want to do our x, y chart. Okay, so my vx equals 6.2 meters per second, and my dy equals 5.6 meters. Gravity is going to be involved, so it's 10 meters per second squared. We're going downwards, so I know my VO is also 0 meters per second. And now I can go ahead and draw, try to start solving. The first thing they want me to find is how long does it take to reach the ground? Well, that's a time. Okay, I have more information on the Y side, so I'm going to start with it. I can do the square root of 2D over G to find time. So the square root of 2 times 5.6 divided by 10 will equal 1.06 seconds. All right, and that's my A part. Now B wants me to find out how far out from the base of the cliff did it land. So for A, I just found this, but for B, they want me to find this, which is my DX. I want to know how far out did it land. So I want to find DX. Well, the good thing is, is I know time, and so if I know time in the Y, I also know it in the X, because this is just one piece of the triangle, so they are the same. I remember that I can only use V equals D over T on this side, so if that's the case, I have 6.2 meters per second. Why did I write 6.6? .6? I don't know. But 6.2 meters per second equals my dx that I want to solve for in my 1.06 seconds. So we will cross multiply and cancel out the seconds. So my dx will be 6.57 meters. All right. So that is b. Now c asks us, what is the resultant velocity of the cam when it hits the ground, both magnitude and direction? So we have to use both our Vx and our Vy. The problem is, is we don't know our Vy yet. So we're going to have to find it first. So I'm going to have to find my Vf first. So Vf equals Vo plus A. T. I could do that, and I know that VO0 plus G times 1.06, oops, which my G is 10, so let me fill that in, okay, so that's 10, so my VF actually equals 10.6 meters per second, all right, so I want to go ahead and find my VF, and my um, Vx, I already know, which is 6.2 meters per second. And my Vf was 10.6 meters per second. So they want me to find this, which is my resultant velocity. So I'm going to do my a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
when I do my 6.2 squared plus my 10.6 squared and square rooted, I find out that this resultant VR is 12.28 meters per second. I also have to find this angle theta. So to find theta, I'm going to do the inverse tangent of my opposite, which is 10.6, divided by my adjacent, which is 6.2. And that equals 59.68 degrees to the ground. Okay. Now, you could have also found this by using the distances, which we had both of those also. So it's kind of, you know, either way how you wanted to deal with it. Like I said, it's how you want to deal with it. And um, again, the numbers might be a little different, but you can find it different ways. Um, I'll look at how you worked it. Moving on, we have that she's diving off uh, this long of a springboard. That's not part of the problem. She initially bounces up with a velocity of 8 meters per second at an angle of 80 degrees to the horizontal. What's the horizontal and vertical? So this is a vector problem. We're trying to find the uh, Vx and the Vy. You are going to be able to do that using trig. So we're going to say the... All right, so you'll use sine and cosine, cosine to find the Vx, and you'll take um, the angle of 80 degrees and plug it in for theta, cross multiply with the hypotenuse of 8, and find out that your Vx is 1.39 meters per second across. For the Vy, you'll use sine, plug in 80 degrees and 8 for your hypotenuse, cross multiply, and your Vy will be 7.88 meters per second up. All right, this next one, we know that it's leaving at 650 kilometers per hour to a 33 degree angle to the horizontal. We want to know how quickly it's gaining altitude. Well, altitude is actually the y direction, so we want vy. And then we want to know how fast the shadow is moving across the ground, so that's actually vx. You'll do it just like the previous problem when we use sine and cosine to find the corresponding psi. So when you plug in your information that you know for sine and cosine, you'll be able to find out by using cosine that Vx is 545.14 kilometers per hour across and that the Vy is 354 kilometers per hour up. Now this final question, a guy, the geyser, the steamboat geyser in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming, is capable of shooting a hot water straight up from the ground with a speed of, okay? So it can shoot it straight up, okay, at 48 meters per second. Well, we want to know how high this is, so we're looking for dy. The thing to realize is we're only talking about the y part of our table because that's the only thing we're going up and down only so we know gravity is involved 10 meters per second squared i'm going to go ahead and want to talk about the downward trip so at the very top up here what is its speed well as the water starts to fall it is vo equals zero meters per second right when the right as it impacts the ground the final speed will be 48 meters per second because that's how fast it can shoot out of the ground and that's how fast it'll hit the ground after it changes directions so we're asked to find dy to do that there's a formula that says dy equals um actually no we don't use that i'm sorry we want to find a formula on the formula chart that doesn't have uh, time involved in it. The only formula that has gravity but no time is Vf squared equals Vo squared plus 2gd. So we'll plug in 48 squared equals 0 squared plus 2 times 10 times d. And that'll allow us to find the height. We'll divide by 20 on both sides to isolate our variable and we'll end up with a dy of 115.2 meters. All right.
Hopefully everybody enjoys this. Um, I could also have worked with the up trip here. If that was the case, then my final velocity would have been zero. My initial velocity would have been 48 meters per second, but I would have used gravity to be a negative 10 meters per second squared. You'll get the same answer either way you do it because you'll plug it into the same equation. But be ready for your exam. You'll have some projectile problems and vector problems, and good luck.